Hello, this is just going to be a short video on what is called um, the altar, which is actually a stage in these buildings called churches. Um, I'm just going to read from a little article and a list. Okay, it says, The church altar, the hewn altars of man. Now I'm going to read Exodus 20, 24 through 26. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Exodus 20, 24-26 so we see right there uh, that an altar should not be made of hewn stone. Um, it should not be, you know, carved or made with tools, and it should not be should not have steps going to it. And that's what these so-called altars are today. They're stages. They have steps on them. They're man-made with tools. Uh, so continuing the modern church hierarchical system has created a man-named building that they call church. Their tabernacles are created and erected as a man-made altars to remember God. These churches are created with a man-made attempt to instruct God in the course of His Spirit. What the hierarchs do not realize is that God does not move, nor will He be instructed by mere men whenever they ring their little dinner bells upon their podiums. They stand over the masses on the stage of the altars, believing their fancy clergy titles are a license to enforce their denominational religious institutional rights. They will say that compliance to them will bring you closer to God. Almost all modern church buildings are built with steps leading up to a hewn altar made with man's tools. The masses are called to the front of the steps to kneel before God, with special titled men who stand over them. The people don't realize that they are kneeling in front of hirelings, not God. Many believe that they are getting closer to God, but in fact they are kneeling before man. Religious authority assumes that they are free to build, build these profane altars, have the clergy sit upon them, and call the sheeple to kneel before them at their bidding. The hierarchical altar displays a soulish splendor where the clergy induce feelings of majesty with a sp spectacle of music and lights to create a manipulated spiritual environment. The conductor stands upon a prop pulpit center stage. The highest elevated place is often where the highest salaried clergy member speaks from his majestic platform. They perform the ritualistic man-made programs, and the glossy-eyed pew warmers mindlessly lap up their every word. Okay all very true. Now I'm going to read 21 flaws of the altar call. And some of these are kind of repeating themselves, but anyway. The invitation system is a modern evangelistic evangelism in innovation. Number one, without scriptural warrant. Number two, that is faulty and dangerous. Number three, that has created new unbiblical vocabulary. Example, repentance and faith has been replaced with decide for Christ Ask Jesus into your heart. Give your heart to Jesus in first-time decisions. Number four, it's not practiced by the church until about 150 years ago. It was begun by Charles Finney, who believed conversion was, psychological, was a psychological event and used this anxious seat to replace the purpose of baptism. It was popular, popularized by Dwight L. Moody. It was standardized by Billy Graham. The invitation system is a modern evangelism innovation, number five, that has contributed to filling our churches with unregenerate church members, number six, leading easily to abuse and, manip and manipulation of the method, especially towards children and teenagers, number seven, established upon psychological premises, number eight, mistakenly equated often with the new birth and or conversion, number nine, involving a high rate of apostatizing, 90 plus percent according to the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Number 10, that is unnecessary for the Holy Spirit to do His regenerating, saving work. Number 11, that it is used to attempt 
to quantify soul-winning results. Number 12, that it is not the biblical mark of whether a church is committed to evangelism or not. Number 13, where often the appeal to come forward supersedes or replaces any explanation of sin, repentance, or faith. Number 14, that implies or sometimes states explicitly that those sinners who do not come forward are disobeying a divine command. Number 15, climaxing with the recitation of a sinner's prayer that is equated with conversion. Number 16, that some respond to in their attempt through human effort to earn their standing before God. Number 17, calling for the sinner's instant performance rather than his careful contemplation of his sinfulness and the one whom he has offended. Number 18, that adds a condition for salvation, come forward, that Christ never gave. 19, that confuses the unregenerate man as to the specific obligations of his duty. Number 20, that morphs the task of the evangelist to the duty of drawing the net by coaxing people to come down the aisle. Number 21, seeking to give men relief from God's conviction before he has made them fully humble and miserable over their sin. I believe that the altar call has become the modern evangelical equivalent of Roman Catholicism's penance. Ask a Catholic how he knows he is right with God, and he will tell you that he did his penance, X number of Hail Marys, etc. Ask someone in a modern evangelical church how they know they are right with God, and he will likely tell you that he came forward during a public altar call. Both are woefully inadequate and unbiblical evidences of the new birth. Amen. So, I have been part of altar calls. I've seen them. I've went forward for them. I've seen people go forward for them. You know, and I've seen people go forward for them time and time again. And I really hope that these people got saved. I prayed for them. And, you know... I tried to talk to them about the Bible, and they just didn't want anything to do with it. And, you know, I came to the conclusion that they were never saved. Um, they just rejected God's Word time and time again. Even though they were going forward to an altar call time and time again, uh, it means absolutely nothing. And, uh, altar calls is one of the, it was one of the final blows for me going to this independent fundamental Baptist church, Victory Baptist, because... They had this charismatic uh, missionary there, and after he gave his charismatic sermon or whatever, um, we did prayer, and I guess he was he was calling for people just to come up front, and and I was praying. I had my head bowed and my eyes closed, you know, and uh, I looked up and I noticed pretty much everybody in the building is up at the altar kneeling, or at the stage, I'm sorry, I need to call it what it is, we need to get get out of that habit of calling it what it's not, and call it what it is, it's a stage, so all these men were, um, everybody in the building pretty much, except for me, was at the stage, bowing down, and I was just like, what a joke, this is ridiculous, this is exactly like charismatics, who the independent fundamental Baptists are supposed to, you know, be completely different, and you know, there's no difference between me praying where I am and praying in front of the stage. And it's all just an illusion. And it's just all manipulation. And, you know, that just really opened my eyes. And I was like, you know, this is this is just baloney. You know, I'll just study the Bible at home from now on. I don't want to be a part of this, you know, mind control manipulation garbage. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to serve God as it says in the Bible. Um these things that they're calling altars are not altars buildings that they're calling churches are not churches uh, they're just buildings it's just a stage and it's creating an illusion and deception and if people who are watching this are still going to a building called a church you need to get out of there because it's going to hinder you either you're going to become complacent and you're you're going to not study the bible and you're just going to go and you're not going to grow or you're going to continue to study the Bible, and you're going to start seeing all kinds of things that are wrong that don't agree with the Bible, and you're going to get out of there anyway. So it's better that you just leave there now until instead of getting uh, comfortable or getting attached to it, and later on, you know, it'll be harder on you to leave or whatever. So, you know, they really are the snares of the devil. Whether their doctrine whether most of their doctrine is right or not, you know, it doesn't really matter because there's so many unbiblical things going on. There's so much mind control and manipulation in these buildings called churches that is nothing but a hindrance to the gospel. And I've done nothing but groan and 
greatly since I've left. So, anyways, these things they call altars today, they are nothing but stages. It's just a platform. It's not an altar. There's nothing holy about it. Um, going forward does nothing. It just proves that you know you're being brainwashed. And that is of the devil. So, thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.